So I finished my bag, which I'll be using for my uh, boxes of scraps. And as I had mentioned earlier in an earlier post, and I will link my previous videos to this one that I've shared with you on how, how I got started on the strip piecing. But this is my two inch scrap tub and my two and a half inch scrap tub. And I like to be able to take these with me to retreats. And so this is a, just a very easy way in which to carry them. And so I've created a uh, bag, a tote bag, that will fit two of the tubs. I don't want to put any more than two in it. I think that's plenty of weight for me as I'm traveling up and down stairs. Oftentimes there are stairs that you have to um, maneuver when you're going to uh, retreats. So this is what I have put together. Um, I basically used my um, dryer sheets, as I had shared with you before, to create... Uh, these fun strips of um, fabric that I'm using for the base of this and I showed you on uh, part two of my foundation strip piecing how to create these beautiful bricks and so I'm going to actually make another bag like this using these bricks so I've got six of them here I need to make two more so that I have enough fabric that will go all the way around my bag is approximately 42 inches um, in circumference here and then there is a um, I've got a piece on the bottom so I'm going to give you the information on and the sizes on how I've made mine yours might be completely different mine's basically based on the size of my dryer sheets which are let's see again these were nine by six nine by six um, nine inches long six inches wide and so that's how this one was made and that's how this one here is going to be created as well. So let me get some information to you on this. One other thing I want to mention, everything that I'm using for this bag is something that I have from the dryer sheets to all of the scraps. So everything that is being used for this is from something that I already have. Even the lining or the um, batting, I'm using a, a very stiff fusible batting. Um, I lost the paperwork for it. I'm not exactly sure which Pellon uh, product it is. I'll do some research and link that in the description box. You could also use Bosal if you have some Bosal, but it's just a nice um, thick, um, stiff uh, Pellon inter fusible interfacing in there to give it some stability. I also have these on hand and these were strips. I'm not even sure when or why I bought them. I don't remember, but I've got these on hand. I believe I got these from a company called Wawak, W-A-W-A-K.com. Um, and so you can check that out. I'll link that in the description box. But instead of, um, you know, you could certainly use your strips and create handles, but I just wanted to use this up. I've, it's been in the drawers and I've just been looking at it for a while, so I decided I wanted to use it. I started out with the, the thicker um, handles. These were, I guess, two inches, but I went with the one and a half inch. And um, this, I think, works much better. And I simply, when I sewed these on, I simply uh, started sewing um, across here, and you could also make an X on it and that just secured it on there very nice a very sturdy handle and so that's what i'm going to continue to do is to use this up as i make my bags so everything that i'm using is pretty much something i already have on hand that i want to get used so here is just a quick review of how i created the foundation strip pieces the first thing that i did is folded my um, dryer sheets in half and I pressed a nice crease in them so I could see the crease and then I brought it to my table and I'm using a three inch wide ruler I lined up that inch and a half mark down the center of that crease on the um, dryer sheet and then I used a pen and today I happen to have a friction um, pen a pilot friction pen and it's a blue and just drew a line on each side of that so that you can see it. You can see it better here on the um, uh, sewing machine. But now I have a three inch um, guide on each side there. And so when I started sewing my pieces, as you see here, I started at the top 
and just kept sewing a new strip on piece by piece by piece and just a flip and stitch is what I'm doing there. And then when I was finished sewing those on, I, and I made sure that I started and stopped at the blue line, which you can't see anymore. It's kind of disappeared here. But once I finished, and I'll, I'll show you this here in just a second, then I trimmed it away. I folded it back on the blue line, and then I laid my ruler across here, trimmed off the excess, did the other side as well, just to make sure I had a nice uh, straight line there, straight as possible. And then when I put my red uh, sashing strips on, I placed them on the front here, but I flipped it over and I followed the blue line as I stitched it on so that I had a nice straight um, seam on each side. And so let me demonstrate that here for you. So what I'm doing here is trying to start and stop right on the blue line as closely as possible when I start stitching my seam allowance. I want to be, you know, my, you might be a stitch or two off, but start and stop as closely as possible on that blue line with every strip that you add. That will just make it easier as you turn, fold this down and press away or cut away the excess fabric. So I'm going to do this all the way down the strip. So I folded it on the blue line from the back side. I'm going to lay the ruler so that I can cut away the excess, leaving a quarter of an inch seam allowance of the fabric there. So there was one. I missed a little piece there. And here is the second side. I'm folding it down on the blue line. I'm going to lay it on the mat here. Line up my ruler so that I have a quarter of an inch seam allowance of fabric. There we go. Now I'm going to grab my red sashing. I am going to place those along the side. And then when I sew it, I'm going to turn it over and actually sew on the blue line so that I have a straight seam allowance with my sashing on the front. So for my um, dryer sheets, my strip piece dryer sheet, I cut nine inch length um, of red and they're two inches wide and I simply just chose those uh, dimensions. You can choose whatever sizes you want, but I'm laying it and matching it to that raw edge and then I'm going to flip it over and sew on the blue line on the back so that I have a nice straight seam allowance for this um, foundation piece here. So let me get that sewn. it open so that finishes that edge and as I showed you on part two of this um, scrappy foundation pieced uh, video you can remove that so you could simply just cut away this excess so that it's not in your way because at this point we no longer need that excess dryer sheet so that can just be tossed away and now that's ready I'm going to go ahead and place this next one here on the opposite side and then I'm going to sash the top and the bottom so I'm going to go ahead and do all of that and then they'll match 
these that I already have here. Here's some of these bricks. I just needed two more to make sure that I was able to obtain the circumference that I need around the bag. Last two bricks are now ready and I can add them to my length of fabric. So I'm simply going to be sewing all of these together side by side to create a circumference that will fit all the way around my bag. I'll get the dimensions of that um, to you when I get it all sewn together in case you are using the same size uh, dryer sheets that I'm using and if you're using the same sashing sizes that I'm using. And again, I've cut my sashing two inches wide by the length of the um, dryer sheet so they were nine inches and then of course I added the two inches on each side so we've got total of let's see how many inches tall is it now looks like it's 11 and a half at this point it'll finish at 11 once I've got my seam allowances in there at this point I have my bag if you will sewn together and it, the circumference of this is 42 inches and so that is completely sewn together. I've got a total of eight of my bricks that I have sewn together, my uh, foundation pieced scrappy bricks. So that is ready to go. I've also cut lining and I have, I'm a garment sewer and I have lots of this uh, rayon lining, which I like to use inside of a bag so it makes things come in and out of the bag easier. So that's what I'm going to use for my lining. And this is cut 11 and a half inches tall because that's how tall the bag itself is by 42 inches. And then I also have this. This is a Pellon product. Um, I will have to investigate what the Pellon number is. It's a very thick uh, Pellon. It's fusible. And so this is going to be fused to the inside of the bag to give it some sturdiness. So that I'm going to fuse to that. So. There again, 11 and a half inches tall, and it's a total of 42 inches. So I'm gonna be fusing that inside this uh, fabric so that it has some stability. And then I've got my um, lining as well. So that is ready to go. And I have the bottom piece. Again, I'm just using a chunk of fabric where I was able to get a six and a half by 14 inch base, which is gonna be the bottom of my bag. I have a six and a half by 14 inch lining, which will line the bottom. I also have a piece of that Pellon product. It's a thick, um, uh, fusible web here, and it's uh, got the um, fuse on one side and it's just soft on the other side, but it will give it some stability. So that will be fused to the wrong side of this fabric as well. And I also have cut from a foam. I just got this at the dollar store, so I have a lot of this foam um, paper, if you will. And I cut um, a 14 inch by six and a half inch piece of foam, and that will be the base for the bag, and it will just give it a little bit of sturdiness. This foam will slide into the bottom of the bag as we're constructing it. And you could, in fact, I did on my other bag, I rounded the edges and just take something that's round that you can hold up against there and draw a line. As you can see there, I've just rounded that off and I'll cut it. And I'll do that on all four corners and it just goes in there much nicer. Um, so that's what I will do for that. Another thing I, I wanted to mention, um, I could have left this piece um, in one length and not completely sewn it in a circle at this point and then just went ahead and fused my Pellon to it. But I actually have two pieces because I just have pieces of that this product downstairs in my um, storage and so I wanted to um, go ahead and just cut two pieces and I can simply just flip this inside out and fuse it to the back to the wrong side of this. But you can certainly keep your bag um, open so that it's one long length and then fuse your Pellon or your Bosal. Um, many of us have Bosal. That's something that you can also use to give this some sturdiness. What I did um, with my other bag is I did some basic quilting once I had this fused before I actually put the bag together. And I'll probably just do some basic quilting, some straight line stitching, maybe some straight line stitching around um, the, the sashing as well. Nothing fancy, but just something that will give it a little bit more sturdiness. So I will accomplish that and I'll show you some of this in fast motion 
and um, then we'll show you how to put the lining and the uh, this cardstock in the bottom of it. So let's get working on that. I've done some very basic quilting on the body of the bag and now I have fused the uh, batting to this um, bottom of the bag and I want to round the corners on this as well and I'm just using this round um, webbing strapping that I'm going to use for my straps to simply round out these corners a little bit and then I'm going to attach this bottom of the bag to the top. I'm going to turn my bag inside out and then I am going to sew this bottom of the bag to the fabric itself. And I'm going to go ahead and pin. I'm going to find some uh, center markings and I'll pin those on both the bag itself as well as this. I'll mark the center markings of the length and the width with pins and I'll match those pins and then I'll continue to pin it all the way around and sew it. I have the top centers marked with pins and the sides are marked and I've also marked the base with pins. And now I'm going to put this together, wrong sides together, and I'm simply going to match up those pin units. If I can get rid of that extra one there. Come around to this side, match that up, come around here, match that up, and come around to this side. Now I can pin it entirely all the way around and get it stitched together. Here I have pinned the bottom of the bag to the top of the bag and I'm going to go ahead and sew about a half an inch seam allowance all the way around and I'll have the bottom of it uh, attached to the bag. My lining is ready to go. I have it sewn um, so it's in a circumference of the circle. This is actually only going to be 40 inches in length because once I quilted my bag um, it did reduce it in uh, circumference. So this is going to be a total of 40 inches around the bag. Here is my bottom lining and I have curved the corners uh, using that same technique. I do have creases lengthwise and crosswise and then I'm going to attach this right sides together in the bottom. But you'll notice here I have two markings with the blue friction pen. And I want to make sure that I leave this open. I'm not going to sew that because number one, I will turn the bag with that eventually with this opening. Plus I will also insert the um, poster board, the foamy poster board in there for my bag bottom. So I'm not going to sew the lining bottom from this point to this point. I will go ahead and attach uh, this based upon the creases like I did with the lining or with the bag itself and I'll pin this and I'll show you what I'm what I have. I have pinned the bag bottom lining to the bag lining itself and it's ready to go here. So I've matched all the creases and made pins um, or placed pins on those areas. I've also folded the excess fabric in um, folded creases in the corners. Um, in each of the four corners just to eat up any excess fabric from the bag that you might have so that way the rest of the um, lining will lay nice and flat. You'll notice I've left open this area right here between the double pins. I've got some double pins there and that is where I will start stitching and I will go around and stop stitching. I'll make a back stitch there. This opening is where we will uh, turn the bag inside out and we'll also be attaching our um, poster um, foam poster in there to keep the bag to give the bag a little bit more sturdiness. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this starting here stopping there. I'm going to get do about a half an inch seam allowance all the way around 
and I will turn it and I'll show this to you in just a minute. I used that four pin method again where I found the centers of the length and the width and then as I put the bags together so that right now um, it's right sides together in the inside so the, uh, the wrong side of the lining is facing me, the wrong side of the bag is right there, the right sides are facing one another. I've pinned it together and I'm going to continue pinning around here and I will actually stitch a nice half an inch seam allowance all the way around the top of the bag and then we will turn the bag through this opening here. So let me go ahead and stitch that and you'll see what it looks like. All right, so it has been stitched. So now I'm going to turn it right side out through this hole here. Let me fight with this a little bit and I will be right back. I've turned the bag so the lining is on the inside. I put a two inch container in there and uh, this is going to work out wonderfully. So um, the bag is ready now for me to go ahead and top stitch. I'm going to top stitch about three eighths of an inch around the whole top of this bag and um, then we will also need to insert the foam into the bag through the opening. So we'll do that next. So I have the top stitching done and I've cut 21 inch lengths of this strapping or this webbing. To me that seemed to be a good size for the handles on my other bag. So that's what I'm going to use for these. And I'll just find some matching points on here to attach them. And I'll simply sew um, each of them like this. And you can also sew across on it to inch, let me bring it closer you so you can see that. I'll pin it on there. I will stitch across, down, over, up, and you can also sew across in the center and that will secure that on there beautifully. And if, of course you can also make your straps from um, fabric. You don't have to use this. I am using this because I have it on hand and I want to use it up. I have them pinned. When you pin them make sure that you don't twist um, these, they need to come straight across like this. That way you can grab the handles as you're working with it. Now, um, what I've done is I've made sure that I've pinned both pieces um, at the same location on the bag. And I brought it down. I see I need to move this one. This one's farther down on the bag than this one. I think I'm going to bring this one up just a little bit. I just eyeballed it and then I'm going to go ahead again and stitch in a big square and you could also do um, an X in the middle of that if you'd like to just to give it some ad additional stability but this does need to come up a little bit. There we go. My handles are now on the bag and so now I'm going to put my um, foam poster board in here. And I'm finding the opening down there. There we go. There's the opening and the lining. I'm going to set it down inside. Push it into the right location. And then what I can do is simply on the inside, I will go in and I will hand stitch this area from here to here to hand stitch it closed. And my bag is finished and ready for some of the containers so that I can take it with me on retreat. One of the things I want to mention is as I've been working on these um, foundation strip piecing bags, I am using up a lot of bobbins, um, leftover bobbins in various colors um, with, with all of the foundation strip piecing and even with the lining, etc. cetera. Um, I did make sure I had a black on here for the, uh, the top of this, but the bottom is just another bobbin. So, um, you know, it's a great way to use up stash of lots of things, stash of your fabric, stash of your thread, um, whatever you might have on hand. I used up my lining stash. I've got so much of that because I am a garment sewer as well. And so, um, 
this is a great project to use up what you have on hand and it's going to be a very convenient bag for me because it's made just perfectly to fit two of my bins, my um, dollar store bins where I keep all of my scrap stash and so when I'm going to retreats I'll be able to take a total of four different size bins with me and I can certainly make more of these bags and, and bring more as well. Here are my two bags. Your bags may be completely different size. Obviously, they'll be a completely different look. I am, again, I'm using up scrap stash, um, whatever I had on hand. This red fabric that I used on this particular tote, this is actually a polyester blend. I'm not sure where I got this fabric. I received lots of donations, so um, I did want to use it up, not necessarily in a quilt, but I'm gonna, I definitely went ahead and used it here in this bag because I typically prefer to use a full 100% cotton in my quilts, but this was a poly blend, and it's fine for um, this particular bag. Uh, these are gonna be very utilitarian bags that I will be able to use a lot when I go on retreats. We all love going on quilting retreats. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. You have gotten some ideas and, in some, and some inspiration to use up not only your scraps, but your dryer sheets and um, any lining, and you can certainly use cotton lining. I went ahead and used my rayon lining because as I mentioned, I have a lot of that on hand. You can use your webbing if you have it or make up some fabric um, uh, handles for your tote bag, but have fun, enjoy. I, I'd love to see projects that you've put together. I hope that you'll post them out on my Facebook page, Quilting with Lori, and go to my Scrap Up Your Stash group page and join there and please post photos of some bags that you're putting together or some of the foundation piecing that you're doing or the scrappy blocks that you're doing. I look forward to seeing that. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really does help my channel to grow. I appreciate your doing that. And uh, comment below and please share the videos with your friends and quilt uh, guild members. And so have a happy week and we will see you this next week. So this was part three of my uh, foundation scrappy strip piecing. I will be doing a part four as well using some of my used dryer sheets, my scraps, and um, I was inspired by an old antique quilt that I had seen which is done in long strips of fabric and they're using vines and flowers um, in the strip foundation method. So I'm going to be using these dryer sheets. So if you have used dryer sheets, hold on to those. I've got some more projects in mind. So stay tuned. Probably next week I'll have that video put up on my YouTube channel. So until then, happy quilting. See you next time.